So our next topic is the dreaded prior period adjustments. We did this uh, in my office when we picked up clients from other accounting firms that didn't know how to do accounting. And we went, oh, well, uh, glad you're with us now because we'll fix your file up for you. So one thing we need to know is, first of all, where is prior period adjustment inside the financial statements? And depending on whether or not your statement of retained earnings is attached or not, you're going to see slightly different options here. So what I've got is a file here where I do have a prior period adjustment. Uh, right now, my statement of retained earnings is actually attached to the income statement. So this is something that was a little bit different from when JASIT originally came out. Originally, in order to do a prior period adjustment, the statement of retainers had to be a separate page. This is no longer the case. So if I want to do a prior period adjustment and my statement of retainers is attached to my income statement, all I do is come over to the far right here and just click on this PPAA button. And that opens up this area here, which we're gonna see in just a moment. If you do have a statement of retained earnings, so it is a separate page, then in that case, all you do is just click on this open, uh, sorry, the prior period adjustment. I've already got it turned on here. So I just turn this checkbox on right at the top here and that activates that same area showing the detail here, okay? Now, what I thought we would do here is just run through a little example of a prior period adjustment. So I'm gonna put on my accountant hat for a moment. So in this example, we had a cutoff error in sales and it was, there was $100,000 of sales that really were related to the prior year, not the current year. So the current year sales are overstated by 100,000, prior years understated by 100,000. The first thing that we need to do is create a new GL account in the working trial balance for prior period adjustments. Odds are the client doesn't have that as one of their accounts. Now, what I did here was I created a very different account number. It looks completely different from the client's accounts, just so it stands out that it's one of ours and not one of the client's default chart of accounts. Once we create that account, we're gonna assign map number 277.3720, which is our you know, a prior period adjustment map number. So we have to do that first. We create the account in the working trial balance, and then we post a couple of journal entries. So the first entry we're gonna do is fix the sales for the prior year. So when we post this adjusting journal entry, make sure that the year is one prior to the one that we're doing. So in this case, we're doing a 2018 year end. We would post the entry to 2017. We would set the type here for the adjustment to prior period. So it's an entry to adjust the sales and the receivables in the prior year. So we're restating the prior year. So we debit accounts receivable for 100,000 and we credit the sales for 100,000. So that restates the prior year. And if we go back into our uh, statement here, what we've done so far is we actually brought this retain earnings up by 100,000. The original uh, retain earnings up here would be 100,000 less. And you see that it is actually 51.52, and now we have 52.52. So the next entry that we're gonna post is for the current year. So the current year, all we're doing is restating the retained earnings. So what we're going to do in that case is we're gonna debit our prior, or sorry, credit the prior period adjustment because our retained earnings was understated by 100,000. And we're gonna debit the sales to take that 100,000 out of the current year's sales. So this is a normal adjusting journal entry, which we post for the current year. And what that does is it gives us this 100,000 right here in the current year. So now the key to this is when we've done this properly is that the prior year's retained earnings agrees to the current year's restated opening retained earnings. And once these two numbers are the same, you are a happy camper. Now, just for extra bonus points, what we can also do is in the two-year statements, just click on the drop down in the column heading and we can choose one of the options here or we could type in anything we like. So we revised our income statement because we, uh, the sales are up 100,000. We also revised our balance sheet so we can do that up in here as well. If you're using nine column financial statements, you'll see a folder up in the top of the statement called columns. And if you open that up, you'll get the same option of being able to adjust the headings on the tops and you could choose revised or restated or whatever you need to do there.
And there is our prior period adjustments. So this screenshot, this one is critical that we're basically making sure that the restated prior year retained earnings agrees to the uh, opening of the current year. All right. And there you go. We're just changing the heading there on the column for the balance sheet income statement cash flow.